Ooh, comments I'll forget that bit <laughs> good evening everyone and welcome to sugar and crumbs my name's Tracy Mann from Tracy Mann cakes and tonight I'm going to be showing you how to do some painting we're going to paint some flowers because that's the flower mode that I've been in the last few weeks because I've just launched my new uh, floral beginners painting class so I have been uh, for the last week or so painting lots of other things with um, embosses and various bits and pieces so I'm hoping tonight so we're going to paint some lilies tonight uh, and we're going to do a couple of different varieties I'm going to show you um, how to do it how to put them onto cakes and all those things as well so hopefully there should be some nice little tips and things for you to do in there so I'm going to cover a couple of cake boards in a minute we're going to do them on the cake boards I'm also going to get my infamous cookie cutter out <laughs> the one that keeps appearing on all my lives at the moment which is my travel coffee cup which is just the best thing ever so all those watching now you know what's going to happen to this lady doe who's just tuned in Kelly <laughs> she's addicted to painting this is going to make your addiction a lot worse doe I warn you now <laughs> so we're going to start painting in a minute I'm going to roll out some sugar paste I'm going to cover a couple of boards and then I'm going to show you various embosses that I've got um, that I can use for painting now I'm not alone so who have I got with me tonight Kelly! <laughs> Kelly's here tonight. Some of you will have seen already if you've been on my Facebook page that Kelly is going to be doing her very first live class. Um, yes, very exciting. You're all right, aren't you, Kelly? Yeah. So Kelly is going to be doing a class called Colour... I keep calling it therapy. It's not, theory. is it? It's theory. Colour theory with Kelly. So I cannot supply therapy. She can't supply therapy. We're going to do theory instead of therapy. Anyway, um, are you going to put a link up for your course, Kelly? She's done it. She's done it already. It okay. So Kelly is going to be doing a Facebook live called, there it is, um, Colour Therapy, Colour Theory. theory. <laughs> I need to leave. Uh, Colour Theory with Kelly. Now, Kelly... I mean, she is my daughter, obviously, so I'm going to think she's wonderful and fabulous, but she is amazing at colour, to the point I drive her crazy, because I'm always going, what about this, what about this, what about this? She is phenomenal. So she is going to be teaching you all about colour theory. Now, colour theory is one of those things that, um, it's actually, if you can understand it, it's so helpful because it's actually going to help you not only with painting, but it's going to help you with building cakes. So you get the right colours together uh, or complementing each other, whatever it is that you're going to do. So it's kind of one of those lessons that you could really do with. And um, <laughs> she is, I'm reading some of these comments, Kelly, <laughs> just trying not to laugh. <laughs> um, so Kelly is going to be doing this class. It's 7.50, it's a bargain. And not only that, Kelly is having all the money because she's going traveling and she's leaving me it's just awful uh <laughs> breaking my heart anyway she's going traveling at the end of hopefully 2021 2022 so it's all going into the travel fund for kelly as well so there you go so if you want to join kelly's class it's monday the 10th of may from half past six till eight so you'll be able to tune in sugar and comes afterwards and watch everything up after that so there you go so um that class kelly has told you all about but i'll be going on about it for a few more weeks anyway so a couple more weeks before it starts but if you do want to join do pop over there and have a look yes I've had my hair cut somebody's noticed her back. finally <laughs> just one of those moments where you think yes they're hairdressers and I've been swimming so it's not too bad I mean I'm back. everything's getting back to normal isn't it thank goodness right so oh yes don't forget to like and share I remembered before you did Kelly tonight because you I normally knew it but um, you normally prompt me yeah i know but you were talking i know i've beaten you to it tonight so there you go and they're all excited about your course all very keen thanks to for see. booking on it so far do you want to come over <laughs> going to tell them all about it come on no i was scared <laughs> we'll get there with her she'll be fine um anyway there we go so yes kelly's class we've talked about that now we're going to get going with some work this evening so we're going to do um lots of painting on sugar paste using lots of bits and pieces so if you are um thinking about joining one of my beginners floral painting classes we've just got one launched at the minute a huge one um we have got um oh, what i've done in the last week or so is i've taken it right back to some really 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 basic stuff so that if you wanted to just try it just see if you can have a go with a paintbrush and see how you get on then hopefully this will help you and I'm going to show you on various different things as well that I've done so I've got one that's sort of on a cake but I've done it on a plaque tonight and I've got ones that are on um, cookies and things so lots of different ideas for you um, and just that 
may inspire some of you <laughs> to grab that paintbrush and have a go and once you've got that paintbrush in your hand I mean it is fatal I have to tell you but once you've actually started painting you'll love it I promise you you absolutely love it and this is completely painting my numbers so if there's anybody here thinking I can't paint I can't draw all of that will be put to bed tonight because I can show you how to do all of that so um, don't worry about any of that we can um, get that all sorted for you you're having you're talking to Nikki aren't you yeah uh, <laughs> I know, how dare Kelly leave me? That's why I keep saying, isn't it, Kelly? Mm. Mm. <laughs> Every time I'm like, oh yeah, I want to go, I don't know, uh, like round Europe, Mum's like, don't leave me. I don't leave me, I'll take me with you. We could go and do some lives in France or something. Oh. Bonjour. <laughs> <laughs> that is the extent of my French. There is nothing else, I can assure you. And my friend Nicola will tell you that as well. It's just shockingly bad. She lives in France and, and I was shocking at French, so let's not go any further than that. Um, <laughs> Right, okay, we'll get over all this in a minute and actually do something. Right, so let's have a look. Let's turn the camera down. There we go. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to need some sugar paste. So I've got some white sugar paste here. doesn't matter what brand it is. It doesn't make any difference. I'm just going to put a bit of icing sugar down and then we'll just roll this out. My pink board is missing before anybody says anything. Not missing as in I can't find it, but missing as in the minute I start um, lighting up my chrome food warmer, I'm always worried that something's going to happen to my pink board, so I usually remove it when I'm doing this. They're all chatting to you, Kelly, aren't they? I know. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Come on, Kelly. Promote your class, I'm girl. I'm good. I'm doing a <laughs> colour theory class where I'll teach you how to mix colours how to understand the basic colour wheel because basically when mum makes cakes, oh here we go I knew I'd be dragged into it she always goes oh how do I make this colour it's too <laughs> bright or it's not bright enough so uh, <laughs> not only am I going to teach you how to normally mix colour but I'm going to teach you how to use it with dusting colours as well because I've noticed that like the grape violet is it grape violet grape violet it's kind of muddy so I'm going to teach you how to brighten it up you did actually you did a very good job i have to say she's very very good with her everyone wants postcards oh my goodness right i'm just putting a bit of water on this um this is a six inch round cake drum it's got a bit of yellow on it i think so obviously yellow food coloring around it's probably the neons somewhere and then i'm just going to pop this over the top like so do you know what i didn't get out it's my plastic side scraper that was too too um I thought it was too organised tonight. Is there one over there? Oh, I've got a big one, that'll do. No, I've got one. No, it's fine, I've got one here. Right, okay. So I'm going to do this on fresh sugar paste. There we go. <laughs> yeah, when I go on holiday, Kelly, you're going to do my lives for me, I think. No, they're saying that I need to pop into their lives. Oh, I see. Oh, right. Oh, lives. I see. Oh, when you're on... Um, oh, yeah, while well, I'm... Kelly on tour. Kelly on tour. Oh, I'll do a... Uh, oh, I'm in this country. What? How do you make this colour? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're going to have a bit of a laugh on this Facebook page, this class. So if you want to join it, I'm sure that Kelly will... She's so good at colour. She's underselling it, really. I have to say, she's got... Oh, I don't know how to sell it more. No, I mean, you are your colour theory is just unbelievable. It really is. It's just absolutely unbelievable. And... Um, uber talented and she'll know i'll start talking about all her work in a minute if i'm not careful oh <laughs> right so that's one covered let's just pop that out of the way so we don't knock it and then we'll just do this other one then we're going to dye we'll get all the sugar paste done first and then we can before we start painting because then otherwise dust will go everywhere and i'll end up in a mess I believe the green board does have the same anti-stick properties from what I understand, but Carol will know more because Carol is the expert on the boards. So you have to check with Carol on those. But Marine this is, says I'm the colour queen. Is the, she is the queen of colour. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, this is um this is actually a plastic tablecloth that I've got here. I've had it forever, so um well, I haven't had it forever, I've had a few of them, but um that's what I tend to well that's what I'm rolling out on at the minute. I do use my pink board on my lives as well. I was exhausted after my last live. My last live was two and a half hours decorating an 80s cake, and if you missed it, I have put it on my YouTube channel now, and it's also on this page as well. Let me just get rid of that wire because I was charging my phone earlier. There we go. That's better. 
Oh, had to jump in for a minute. Right. Okay. And let's cut this again. Okay. I'll just go around the outside edge. I know people use all sorts of different methods. I like the good old plastic side scraper. Oh no. Are you talking about Russia now? Yeah. They said, I hope you're not going alone. Well, and I said, well, mum made me go. To, well, I didn't make, make you go I alone. I went to Russia on my own, so I can do it. She went to. You didn't go to Russia on your own, did you, Kelly? You I did. Lots of, pretty much. Pretty much. Right. Okay. There we go. So that's that. So we've got those two there, and then what we're going to do? We're going to take this. And I was going to dye this a leafy green colour. There we go. Right, so this is a uh, colour splash leaf. This is a really nice colour. I love this colour. I'm always going on about this colour. So let's put a little bit of that in there. I don't want it to be too dark. So I'll just put a tiny bit in. Let's see what we get. I'll probably under underdo it now. Excuse my hands. I wonder what happened today. If anything happens to me just before a live, it's normally connected with my edible printer. And lo and behold, we had a little fight earlier. <laughs> There we go. We're getting a nice kind of, well, actually it's coming out similar colour to this actually, isn't it? Let's make it a tiny bit darker. A little bit more, not too much more. Just a bit of contrast. There we go. Like so. Actually, I should have done the other white one before I did this one. The idea is I'm trying to do, well, I'm going to try and do four, but we'll see how we go. Some of them are quicker than others. And then I've got a few examples as well. So there you go. You'll be able to see that. What are we doing? Yeah, the eighties cake has been eaten now, so <laughs> it was actually a present for somebody, so for my sister-in-law, so she's had it now. So that one's gone. On to the next one. Right, there we go. Okay, so we're going to get that rolled out. Oh, there's lots of you on tonight. That's nice. There we go. stop it sticking it's still insisting upon sticking right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out one of my famous cookie this if you haven't seen this before then you've missed a couple of my lives this is my cookie what have I called it I keep getting it wrong every what time Ca coffee, coffee cup? cup it's a coffee cup but it's a cookie cutter and I have been going wild with this over about the last three weeks now um, I'm not the only one because loads of people have bought them it's just been fabulous I absolutely love this cutter every time I think there's nothing else I can do to it I find something else so we've made some cookies um, actually what I need is some royal icing Kelly let me just get some royal icing put that there will that be a mistake no that seems to be okay right okay so a little bit of royal icing uh, with a bit of water in it and then all I'm going to do is just put this on here you can do this with piping gel as well you don't have to do it with um, royal icing if you don't want to so piping gel will do the job as well and then we'll lay that down on there got a bit of icing on there never mind okay then what we'll do as well is we'll take hold of my plastic scraper and we'll just mark this across like so this one's a bit wider than my usual plastic scraper so look it's getting a bit of a double effect there that's quite cool right okay so we've got one of those and I think that should be about it because so we've got a few more examples we've got some more sugar paste if we want to go back and make any more up we can do that as well okay yes Nikki had to take over from you on Saturday, uh, Sunday Kelly mm, yeah. <laughs> she did a very good job she's hired she's gonna have to take over when you leave me Kelly <laughs> but you're not gonna leave me are you <laughs> yes she turned into a PA right I just want to talk about the cookie recipe your lovely cookie recipe. Yeah, so someone's asking, is there a specific one? Uh, we do have a cookie recipe, which we give out with a cookie kit. We give it out with pizza kit and with royal icing. So we do have one. There's loads of cookie recipes online, absolutely loads of them. Um, but our specific one we, we have 
um, available. Oh, gold when you purchase things. It's me chucking stuff around then. <laughs> right, let's get the green board in. Here we go. Right. So we've got two boards here. We're going to do lilies. That's what I said we were going to do tonight. We're going to do a couple of other bits on the other ones as well, but we'll come to that later on. So I have got here, this is a patchwork cutter. It's a lily patchwork cutter. And all I'm going to do, now this is a six, uh, that's the five, this is a six inch round. So imagine this is the top of a cake. And all you're going to do is pop that on there and just press it down, just so it embosses it. That's what we want. Hopefully I don't press it so hard. It, lifts well, I've done that before as well let's have a look there we go that's pretty good now if you're not sure you can always fit this back in again because once you've kind of made the indent it just slots back in again so you can always press it back down again like so there you go you see so you can do it again if you haven't quite got it done enough you can just kind of as you put it on there you'll feel it kind of just drop in so that's that and now, we've also got this one. Now, this may be familiar to some of you. Um, this is my cookie cutter. So we have been making in the Royal Icing Group lily cookies like so. So what I'm going to do is just emboss this onto the sugar paste and paint one up as well. Um, but I'm not going to be doing it in um, uh, Royal Icing. We're going to do it in sugar paste. So I'll just pop that on there and press it down. Now, what this... Where are the, sorry, where are the embossers on here? The what, sorry? Are they in new products? They're in new products, yeah. yeah. OK, so if I do that, you're going to see that it's not going to mark these lines down here because I should have done it the other way around. But that's OK, because we can still do it now. We can press it down and you will get the lines there and there. There we go. That's enough. That's what we need to see. OK, so I'm going to move that out of the way because we're going to focus on this one to start with. There we go. And we're going to do some cocoa butter painting. So for those of you that haven't done it before, let me move everything out of the way. Um, cocoa butter is a solid product and let's find some. Here we go. Okay, so cocoa butter is a solid product and we need to melt it. So we need a bit of a heat system in order to be able to do that. So we use something called a chrome food warmer. Now this isn't something that myself or Carol sells, but you can get them on Amazon. Sorry, I'm just trying to move across so I can see if everybody can see. There you go. Um, and that is um, a tea light in the middle, which I'm going to light. But could you know what? I can't remember what to do with the matches. Because I have... just asked very quickly. Yeah. Um, which were the colours that they used for the flat? What that you used for the flower coffee cup? Which one? The one I painted. Yeah. Oh, um, rose and woodland green. I think. I think. Off the top of my head, if it's the uh, flowery one, or if it was the flowery one from the weekend. Then it was rose and woodland green. Right, let's light this. There we go, that's successful. And then we're going to pop on here a metal paint palette. This gets very hot and it's going to melt the cocoa butter. So we're going to pop that on now and you'll see that melt on the camera very quickly. I've got my camera quite low this evening so that you can actually see what's going on. Well, I hope you can anyway. Yeah, you have got it quite low. Okay, that's fine. Now, we, when we do cocoa butter painting, we use dusting colours. So we're going to be using pink. And I'm actually going to turn this into a stargazer because I really like those flowers. Although I don't so much like the smell of them, but I do like the look of them. So when I got this cutter or this um, embosser, what I found with it, there were a few marks on it extra that I wanted to put on myself. So there's no reason just because you've got an embosser that that's it, you can't change anything. You can change something. So I've got here, this is a Dresden tool. And all I'm going to do is just put in a couple of centre lines. So I'm just going to take my Dresden tool and just drag it through the sugar paste like so. And then I'm going to do the same on this side. Like that. And then there's another one there, like so. So I just wanted a few extra lines. That's me, personal preference, nothing else. Also, I wanted another one in here. And then another one here. And then another one there. So just a few extra lines to say it's not written in stone this, you can change things around. Um, now when I teach um, painting classes, we use paintbrushes with numbers on them and that's what we're gonna use tonight. So I've got all of them in at the moment. 
um, paintbrush wise. Hold on, let's move out the way. So they're all numbered um, starting from zero, zero, but we haven't got that one tonight. We've got zero, one, two, and three. So those are the main ones that we use most of the time. We're going to start with paintbrush, which we start with probably paintbrush two, and we'll keep paintbrush three dry and out of the cocoa butter. So we can use that brush for blending. So we'll keep that one out. Okay, right, where are we now? We are going to use the colour, did I use rose? We're going to use this one here. So I'm going to pop a little bit in there. I'm just going to move that out of the way because I've got this habit of chucking it everywhere. So we're going to use rose. We're going to use white. You need lots of white if you're doing flower painting. Some of you are finding you're going through it quite quickly. And we're going to need a little bit of black, but I'm going to put that on the other side. There we go. And also, um, where is my lily woodland green? This is a lovely green, this one. We're going to use woodland green, but we're going to combine it with spring green. Because it seems to just take the edge of it off. Let's put that over there. Right. I'm probably off camera a little bit, but you'll see it in a minute. There we go. Not to mention my hands covered in printing, but anyway, that's another story. Um, you'll also need a piece of kitchen roll, and that is what you use to clean your brushes. So you take hold of your paintbrush. Now, I've been painting, of course, today, so I'm just going to dip that in there. And I've got a little bit of green on there, so let's get that out to start with. Actually, that's paintbrush two. That's what I said I was going to start with, didn't I, Kelly? Now, um... Sorry, there might have been an interruption on sound there. We're back up and running again. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take hold of my cocoa butter and pick up some of this rose colour. Okay, and then grab some white. And we're going to just do a nice pale base colour to start with, but we're not going to cover the whole thing. You need to be a little bit careful with this one. Okay, so don't just go storming in there and cover it all up because with stargazers have got a center line of pink so you just need to be a little bit specific there the sounds come back it's all right it's because i've got my yeah, it's um it's just buffering i'm just gonna go back on yeah, it'll come back on in a second it's still recording isn't it yeah the sound will return <laughs> there you go hopefully it's all back again now right okay so what we're going to do so these are the center lines here and I'm just going to paint down the centre of there, like so. And then I'm just going to take my brush and I'm just going to pull that out a little bit, soften it up a little bit so it doesn't become a solid line. And just take that up there. Okay. Now this goes down past here so you're going to have to go past these stamens until you get down to the bottom there I'll just blend that in like that so that's that first one the second one is on this side I'm not looking at any comments Kelly at the moment okay. so if you've got everything under control mm -hmm. <laughs> okay so we're going to go down this second one here again just soften it out don't let it get sort of too stripy but note that I'm not painting the whole thing I'm only painting the center of it okay and we'll come up here so we've got quite a big one there so we'll take that out a little bit again just use that brush just to soften it down a little bit it's like blending it through it's like uh, it's like makeup I guess and then across there that on there. Same as before. And then this one. You're going to see how quickly this comes together. It's it's really quick actually. And it's a really nice topper, I think, this one. If you have this next to somebody's name, you know, happy birthday, and then next to their name, I think it's really pretty. Um, as I say, I love stargazers. I don't like the smell of them particularly. Now with this lily, we, it took me a little bit of time to kind of work out um, where everything was on this. Um, these are the petals. This is also one here. 
okay which means this one is not a petal it's the underside of the lily all right so don't get confused with this one here so we're going to just paint this for now we're just going to fill it all in and then we'll come back and darken it up later on but that is not one of the petals okay so just going to fill that in now like so now with cocoa butter um, it takes um, a little bit of time to dry not one to two minutes not very long um, but whilst we're waiting for it to dry rather than sort of hover and, and wait we just move on and paint something else instead so you're never sort of sat here waiting you just move around so we, on this lily because this is the side version we've only got three petals that are actually um, you can see the middle on that's these three here so we're just going to do those now where we put the extra bit of Dresden tool in there to kind of make it look a bit more like a lily and then we're going to take this colour and we're just going to go down the back of it like that so a straightforward paint now if your paint is quite translucent have a look at it and see if you've got um, too much cocoa butter in there because if you really pile in the cocoa butter then it gets quite translucent and if you um, put in lots of dusting colour it gets sort of quite thick so you kind of want a bit of a balance there but you can see that the coverage is really good it's covering up the sugar paste so we should have no issues there at all now this sort of little bit here is where the lily is sort of turning over and we've got another one there as well so keep an eye out for that one because otherwise you you'll probably do what i did earlier and forget it's there but we'll paint those up a slightly different color later when we get that far along there um, and then you'll be able to sort that out okay right so let's clean our brush again so we're using paintbrush number two at the moment and oh actually no before I do that I'll tell you what I need to do I need to put a little bit of pink on this bud but not a lot just a little bit like so so just sort of a patch really okay now we can clean our brush so just dip it in the cocoa butter and just wipe it onto the kitchen roll and that will get rid of that let's turn this around and we have got green next so we're going to again dip it in there now I pick up the woodland green um, but I also picked up a little bit of spring green as well and some white to achieve this colour. Like so, put a bit more white in there. So we don't want to go too dark too quickly. So I'll stick some more white in there. We'll have a look, see what we've got. And we'll start here, what we got. And that's quite a bit lighter than I was hoping for. So let's put some more woodland green in there okay so we'll add this on now so again it can look very flat if you just do one layer so we always go back and do a couple of extra sort of shades to get it the color that we want so just this is layer one so we'll pop that down up here now i may have to change brushes in a minute because i think it's getting quite narrow now can you see let's switch over to brush one so as things start to get more and more, uh, more smaller, you can change your brushes so that you are moving down. So you've got smaller brushes, otherwise it gets really hard. We don't want it to be like that. So change your brush down. What did I pick up? I picked up brush one, so that's okay. So down we go. And we're going to go up here. Bring that down as well and like so okay now this bud up here what we're going to do here is we're going to put down a combination of greens up here so we will put down a little bit up here to start with like so but we want it to be more limey green at the top so we'll just sort of blend that in to start with like that and then I'm going to go back to the spring green but I am going to put some white in it because it's too strong otherwise uh, yeah there we go and we'll put that in at the top here so it's a bit brighter up here we don't need a lot of it just a little bit up there and then we can just blend that through like so okay 
there we go right we're going to let that dry now while that's drying we don't have to sit and look at it we can move on to the next thing so we're going to switch brushes again we're going to in fact kelly i think i forgot to put the brown on did i pick yeah we need brown is it brown i did with the other one earlier yes right so we're going to use brown not black we need black for something else later on so we're going to use brown food coloring Ooh, hot hot I did touch it, I know. So this is my zero brush. It's tiny. There you go. You can see how small it is. My favourite brush. Kelly's favourite brush. If Kelly gets hold of this brush, I've had it. In fact, we've got two or three on oh, it. Oh yeah, I keep saying, oh yeah, I'll take it home with me. I know, you want to take one home. I don't know. Well, I suppose you can do some art with it, but yeah, it's your favourite brush, isn't it? Mm. So we're mixing up brown. And what we're going to do is we're going to paint the stamens that you can see now they're quite small but you can see them so it's painting by numbers i'm not making this up it's all there the only thing i've done that i've adapted this slightly is just put in an extra line a couple of lines on the lily other than that i haven't done anything else to it okay so we'll just paint that up and pop another one in there like so and then these ones here are a bit bigger because this is a bit more front facing so again we're just going to follow this round this is dark brown with nothing else mixed in so i haven't um added any white to this i've just done neat dark brown so you need these to be fairly dark i may even have to go over them twice but for the moment i at least get one layer down like so See how quickly this all comes together it doesn't take very long and i just think it's a really nice topper for somebody it could be a wedding could be a birthday anniversary anything really like so and then another one there now one's probably meant to be one of those sort of I'm trying to think of the technical word for lily what is it that bit in the middle they're all going to know, aren't they? It's not stamen, is it? Stigma. Stigma, one of those, yeah. But that's okay. We're not worried about that. Right, so we'll clean our brush up again. I'm impressed I got a D in biology. I know you did. <laughs> You're just as talented as your mother when it comes to biology, Gilly. Right, and then we're going to take some of the spring greeny colour and we're just going to follow these lines down here and pop those in. So... There's a couple of sort of stamen lines there you can see. So again, still using that brush, the zero, zero, uh, no, zero brush. So there is a zero, zero. That's just a thinner brush. Some people really like that brush. I don't mind it. I do use it now and again. Just going to put a little bit of extra green at the bottom there, just because that's the centre of the lily itself. Okay. That didn't take long to do did it so far and then what we're going to do we're going to go back to paintbrush one and we're going to darken this up a little bit now so let's turn this around and we're going to grab hold of some of the rose color and we're going to make it darker so i'm just going to mix it in with the rose i've already got here just to kind of be a bit more economical here i've got my paintbrush three ready and we're going to make these center bits darker so we're going to bring those out Just blend those over the top like so hopefully that's making it stand out it's probably standing out more on camera than what i can see <laughs> so we'll put an extra line up there extra like so you all right kenny yeah good just someone asked what are the basic colors you would suggest to start painting Okay, so basic colours. Um, oh, Kelly, over to you. Well, I was just going to say, first of all, we have a cocoa butter painting kit. We do, but there... So that includes everything, but it depends what you're painting. But in Mum's case, for these, it's always dusky pink, rose, woodland green, white and black, would you say? Yeah. For flowers. 
Um, you won't go wrong with a couple of shades of green if it like spring green and woodland green. You need greens um, because when you come to do anything like this, the more green that you have, the better. Um, yeah. White and black, key, uh, red. Basically. <laughs> Primary colours, so red, blue and... What was it? Red, blue and what? Yellow. Hello. I'm looking at colour, colour theory Kelly over there. Um, red, blue and yellow. Petal blue was the colour we tend to use. We've got cerulean blue as well. That's a darker blue. That's quite nice. Okay, so I'm just going to... There we go. Well, what colours are you using tonight? Tonight we're using rose. We're you these are all sugar flare colours, by the way. That I, apart from the black and white, which we tend to get from Edible Art, um, they are all sugar flare. So let me just take this off for a second. Let's get in. Um, so we use uh, rose, woodland green, spring green, black, and brown to do this particular project. So they're really core colours. I'm not picking anything particularly sort of strange. Um, for the ones that have just joined my beginners um, painting class for flowers, I've asked them to get rose because I've used it a lot in the course. Kelly says I'm pink mad. You are. Uh, which I am. And um, yeah, so rose is in there. And then also grape violet is another colour that we've incorporated as well because that's a really nice colour. We've mixed it with something to make it an even nicer colour. Haven't we, Kelly? Mm -hmm. There we go. So that's all starting to stand out now and look very nice. So don't forget that bit there is not a petal, okay? So don't get carried away with that. All right. So I'm just going to get bits of the brush off there. Now, before we go too far, we'll go back over this side and do this one. Like so. So just blend that in as well. Are you smudging them on? Um, am I smudging them? I what do I normally say? We're just sort of blending. I was thinking of the word I normally use, blending rather than smudging. So what we're doing is just kind of making sure that the we don't end up with anything sort of too strong. I mean, this is quite a strong flower anyway. Um, these centre lines, but I just don't want any panels of anything. And what actually happens with the paintbrush is when you do this, you actually get this really nice sort of almost um, veined effect on it. So it does look really nice. Let me pick that up so you can see what I'm doing here. So you can see there that it's starting to sort of give you the lines that you that look normal onto a flower like so. OK, I'll put that down. I'm just going to put a tiny bit of that colour there. It doesn't need to be a lot, just a little bit. Okay, right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to have to do something with the back of these two here because they're just too flat at the moment. So we'll take that colour again and what we'll do, because it's going to be darker underneath that petal, so we're just going to put that colour down there and then we're going to take hold of our brush and we're just going to pull that colour down just to blend it down to the bottom, like so, because we've got two sides to see on this. And then we'll put a little bit of extra colour in there where it's kind of going to be tipping over the edge. That's starting to make it a bit more 3D. Kelly, is it working? She'll be able to see. Yeah. Well, I'm also 10, 10 seconds, seconds behind. behind. I knew you were going to say that. But I'm going to just put in a bit of extra colour because Kelly told me off earlier today because it was not coming out dark enough. Isn't that right, Kelly? Yeah. So we'll do it a little bit darker when we're on the live so you can see it over there like so down the bottom there and actually because it's got these really nice lines in there if some of the paint runs into it that's actually okay so just let it do what it's got to do and that'll be fine there we go that's better and then don't forget this one here as well we've got the underside of that to do I'm just going to Darken that one up there. Okay, like so. There we go. So far, so good. Right, let's take the brush again. Let's go back to the green. Um, we're going to put in some darker shading on the green now because at the moment it's just very flat. So what we'll do is we'll get hold of some woodland green. 
we will add a little bit of white to it because it is quite strong this color so and i've got paintbrush number one Oh, Sharon, it's Sharon's just made a comment about the sunflower. I, I'm sure it was Sharon that made her birthday cake. Did I show you? Sure, yeah, yeah, that was amazing. She did. You did so well, Sharon. I love sunflowers. You do. You love sunflowers. I've got a tattoo. Of She's one, got a so. sunflower tattoo, has Kelly. Yeah. Which I don't mind. It's fine. I don't mind. It's fine. I don't mind at all. Do I? No. It's Dad the one who minds. I know. That's okay. I don't worry about him. <laughs> so all I'm going to do now is just take some of this green just run it across what we've got already I'm just going to take this pink out here because it's dripping off everywhere right there we go So I'm just going to put this colour kind of down the side of the stem rather than all over it as you can see it going in there and then it just looks a bit more kind of 3D again. Do you recommend painting onto the sugar paste straight after icing a cake board or waiting for it to dry? It depends what you're doing. If you're doing what I've just done and you're stamping an embosser on and painting it straight away that's fine. If you're painting flowers, my flower group um, are finding they're okay as long as they don't lean on the cake a, a couple of them have made comments about that already um, if you're transferring an image on like um, some of my other classes that actually have images that go on it's better if it's dry so it really depends ultimately what you're trying to do um, but you can do it it is possible if you um, it's just it can be a little bit more tricky okay but obviously this is sugar paste I've just rolled out because you've seen me do it so um, you know that this is fresh sugar paste and it doesn't matter what brand it is as well people always say oh what brand it honestly it doesn't matter anything is fine I've not found a particular issue with any sugar paste so I'm sure whatever you use will be absolutely fine so put a little bit of extra dark down the bottom there like so and again you can always run that straight up that line there just gonna sorry my brush keeps dropping let's take some little bits off someone else said they're going to get a sunflower tattoo <laughs> does it look like the embosser actually your tattoo does look like the embosser kelly yes although i don't think that it was your tattoo was designed no, by it patchwork was not designed off the embosser. <laughs> i'm pretty certain it wasn't so that's fine okay so there we go you can see the difference that makes by just adding in that extra kind of layer of color um, already it's starting to pick up now um, what we're going to do again we're going to switch now to zero we're going to pick up some black let's turn this round hot 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 let's turn that round just mix up a little bit of black we're going to put the spots on here and you'll watch it change because it does change this dramatically so all we're going to do is take our brush and we're just going to put on some tiny little spots. Now they tend to gather at the bottom and then get less as you get towards the top of the flower. So just bear that in mind when you do this. Now you could do this with a pen, an edible pen, if the sugar paste is dry. If the sugar paste isn't dry, you'll find the pen will just sink into the paste. It's not very good. Um, but I, you do get better definition if you can do it with a paintbrush on something like this. I think you can anyway. So this is just black dusting colour mixed with cocoa butter. Okay. And then up this side. So don't forget, I didn't paint this right to the edge, so there's a little bit of space to move. Actually, I think I've missed one. I've just spotted another one. Hold on. Backtrack. I've just spotted a missing stamen. I've only spotted it because I'm now putting the black in. Let's put that back on again. There's another one there. I've missed. I missed that one. There we go. That's better. And then just a little bit of green to do the bit there. There we go. That's 
better. Right, let's go back to what I was doing, back to the black. Okay. So if you haven't done any painting before, um, we've got a couple of beginners, we've got a few beginners classes now actually. So we've got Sunflower, which is a beginners one, and we've got a beginners cocoa butter painting course, which is four little projects together that get you going. And we've also got now beginners flowers. Beginners floral painting has just been launched. So there's lots to get involved with and the prices are anything from five pounds up. So there's a huge variety of classes. So don't, um, and obviously I do lives here as well that are free that you can watch and get involved with as well. Loads of you have done this and since gone on and done your own thing. And you can always post them onto my Facebook page or on Sugar and Crumbs and tag me in them so I can see what you're doing. Okay, you can see that's changing dramatically now. Oh no, she's telling everyone about her tattoos now. Well, no, a lady said that her, <laughs> she, she, she flipped when uh, her daughter came home from Thailand. Was it Thailand? Thailand. Um, with a vine tattoo, yeah, especially well, as I'd sent her with a sterile medical kit. It was probably the fact it was Thailand, maybe more than anything else. Did that worry her, maybe? See, I'd want you. When done. does the beginners flower painting class start? Right, so it's available now. The beginners floral painting class is available now. You can do it at any time, and you just follow it as and when you want to. So the course material is is they've had the first couple of lessons, and there are a few. Um, that are going to be coming out over the next couple of days but by Saturday they'll have the entire course and you just follow it in your own time so you don't need to um, follow it along with everybody else you can just do it whenever you like and there is a payment plan on it as well so if you don't want to pay for it all in one go you can pay over two and three months as well and I don't charge for that it's interest free so you just need to drop me an email I've got absolutely loads of people on interest plans or payment plans so don't don't worry about it if you want to do it that way I don't mind at all so just let me know and just drop me a little email and I'll be more than happy to help you so don't worry about that there you go I can see this coming out really quickly now okay I'm gonna hold that up so you can have a little look and see what I've done actually I'm going to do a couple more just down the bottom here Made this one okay so there you go isn't that lovely it's very very easy and very very straightforward and that's something you can paint up very quickly onto a cake loads of people love lilies and if you go on to look at lilies uh, go on to google and put in lilies there's absolutely loads of them on there if you can just understand how this works this particular cutter or embosser I should say then you'll find it very straightforward but I would do a practice run first or follow this video before you have a go because it can throw you a little bit when you do it but it does it looks really pretty doesn't it it's it's a really effective one to do um, and you can do it I mean just think how many different lilies there are so you can do orange ones you can do pure white pure pink all sorts of different ones if you do the white one it's not going to take you very long at all is it literally you're just going to do the brown stamens and a few dots and you're there so it's very very quick um, and as you can see it's very very pretty and I will put all these pictures up on Instagram when I'm done at the end so that you can see them um, and see what um, they look like so let's have a look at another lily another way so we've got my lily cut, um, cutter here so you could do this onto the um, straight onto um, a cookie itself if you wanted to now we did them with royal icing so that's what they look like with royal icing and then this is what they look like if we're going to do them with sugar paste so we're just going to put some marks in here with this now we piped these in before now with because this is sugar paste we're going to mark them in like so there we go just put some center lines in like that and then with this one we're going to do very similar so we're going to take that there let's get a bigger brush this time so we'll go for paintbrush two now so we'll go up a size and paintbrush two and three 
So if you wanted to do this on a cookie, you could cut it out and then obviously you could lift it and put it onto a cookie. And do it that way so you could put it onto there if you wanted to. So again, you could do the same sort of thing. You could just paint the whole thing. So we could do this one all pink. Let's we do this one all pink, Kelly. You're going to yeah, go not pink again. Well, I mean, we've already got the pink out. So. <laughs> I've got orange out for later as well, just in case. So we're just going to paint these separately. So this is an, a, a nice open one. Let's say, imagine this is on a cookie. This is what we're thinking with this one. So we'll paint the whole thing. Am I on camera? Yes, I am. So that's okay. And we'll paint it in sections so that we've got our brush going in the same direction as the petal. And we'll just go over like so. And then this one here. Bit more paint. This takes up a bit more paint than the other one. The other one was um, a bit, quite a bit smaller. When I put the two together, you'll see what I mean. But this would be for a cookie, you see. Or you could do it straight onto a cake. I did do it straight onto a cake, didn't I, Kelly? Mm. There's a video somewhere of me doing this straight onto a cake. So you could paint that up. So this one was more of a stargazer. This one we'll do as a more just a, a general pink lily. Like so, and where are we going here? We're we going this way now. Let's get a bit more paint, I'm running out of paint here. So, what we're doing at the moment is just putting down a base colour before then going back and then adding our shading in. So, there we go, like that to start with. So that's kind of one layer on there already. So it's a really nice shape, this one. So that, I'm gonna put this other one next to it so you can see the size of it. So you can see there's quite a big difference between the two of these. Um, that's on a five inch plaque. This is on a six inch. Okay, so this actually does fit on a five, but it's a bit tight. Um, I think it looks better on a six with this one. So while this is still wet, we can actually blend this as well. We can do this, we'll get our stronger colour going. And we'll put that down the middle there, like so. And we'll just blend that straight through. You can see it's taking those edges out. Can you see what happens? It just disappears. Don't forget this sugar paste is soft as well. And then we'll put another colour along like so. Make sure that's softened up. You can also put a bit of extra colour in sort of along there where it's a little bit darker between the petals. That will make it stand out a bit more. I've got a light shining on me, so it's a job to actually see what's going on. I have to keep looking up at the camera every so often. So you can put dark there. There we go, that's better. Yeah, that's better. And then that way. So you've got a bit more free reign, I think with um, this one facing this way. It's just a different arrangement, isn't it? This one is just one on its own and would be used as more of a biscuit, I think. But you could do more cakes, as I did once before. And like so. A bit more. So the stargazer tends to have the white going round it, whereas this one, I've just kind of done the whole thing pink, near enough. When you blend, do you make your paint runnier? Um, I am a little bit at the moment, yeah. 
but you don't want to make it too runny though because then you start stripping all the paint off so you need to be a little bit careful with it um, you want to add a little bit more but not too much more otherwise the cocoa butter tends to start removing all the paint so you want to be a little bit careful I turn this round a little bit so I can get to it a little bit better there's no point in me trying to struggle with this and get it in the wrong place Okay, I'm just gonna get some little bits stuck on there. Right, okay. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna go back and do a bit more shading because it's a little bit, um, bit similar to this one here. So let's get a bit more dark going. I'm gonna tap a little bit of extra color in down here. And that should then start separating these petals. Otherwise, they're all going to look like they're blended together. We don't want that. So a little bit of dark in there. So I know lots of you have done my painting classes. And lots of you, I'm sure, will, will say, <laughs> even if you can't paint, I can get you to paint. Don't worry. Did you ever do a jumper and vest painting um, yeah, video? Or... There is a video on my YouTube channel of me painting um, an elf jumper that I did last Christmas because we got a jumper cutter but it only came out just before Christmas and I literally didn't have time to do anything with it. So it is there. Um, so if you go to YouTube, you'll find, um, if we go into Tracy Man Cakes, you'll find the elf jumper on there that I painted but um, I'll link it now I've got the link Kelly's got the link there you go so you can have a look at that there we go right so you can see the difference that's made these have now stepped forward and the others have gone back can you see the difference by just adding in these bits here so that's actually quite important it's just when you're up close and painting things, you don't realise what you need to do to make it sort of stand out. Now, because we're going to do sort of stamens and bits in the middle here, and we need them to be sort of a limey green colour. Because we're now painting onto sugar paste that's already been covered in pink, I need to go back to white now. So I'm going to have to take paintbrush number one, which has got green in it at the moment, which is not very helpful. So let's get rid of that. There we go. Let's turn that around. It's hot. There we go. And I'm going to mix up some white. So we're going to paint over what we've done to give ourselves the right base to then be able to paint over the top of it. All right. You'll see what I mean in a minute. So what we're going to do is we're going to put some stamens in but we're going to do them in white first so we do the centre one there which actually will then do three little dots like so and then we're going to move across here and we're going to do another one there and then another one there so they're not all coming out at the same point. I just want to make clear that. And I'm not going to paint the tops either because they're brown and I won't need to do that. It's only because I'm going up to a lighter colour that I need to put the white down now. You'll see what I mean in a minute when I put the green on top of it. Okay. Now, if you make a mistake... And you go over anything i've gone over that a little bit i'll just take hold of my brush get the pink and then just go over it again so you kind of just there you go all done so any little bits that you've done that have gone in the wrong place are easily fixed you don't have to worry too much about that um now while they're drying we could do the dots because we're waiting for those to dry so let's go to now because this is bigger should we do no we'll do zero We'll still do the zero brush. So we can just literally start this process here. So you can do this once you're sure that you've done it all, apart from I haven't done the stamens yet, but we can work around that. Right. 
right. Okay. So if you want to make sure these are fairly even, you want to make sure your paintbrush is facing the ceiling. So you don't want to have your paintbrush sort of tipping towards the wall. And I always say to my students, if your paintbrush is facing the wall, then you're going to get sort of more squashed dots than if it's facing upright. We're having a whole evening on lilies, aren't we, at the moment? I'm going to show you some other flowers after this, okay? So we're not just going to focus on lilies tonight. I've got another few up my sleeve that you might like to have a look at, involving my coffee cup, obviously, because I'm obsessed with it. If you haven't seen my coffee cup um, before, <laughs> Just watch every live that I've done in the last three lots, I think. No, I did do an 80s cake. I don't think there was a coffee cup on there. But I'm a bit obsessed with it at the moment. So only because I've had so many good ideas with it. And every time I think of something else, I go, I could put that on my coffee cup. So, yeah, it's um, it's certainly uh, <laughs> getting well used. Let's put it another way. more paint when you're putting the paint in the um break paintbrush in the paint as well make sure you twist your brush don't just dab it in there because then it will preserve your brush as well i've always got something up my sleeve that's what i'm always saying i've got various catchphrases now they'll probably all start listing in a minute <laughs> could you use cocoa butter and dust the blood lattes um, I don't know to be perfectly honest because I've never done it um, I doubt it I don't know but I doubt it um, because what I think would happen is I think it would just you need to paint it not flood it because it's got to set then you see um, I don't think you if you're flooding lettering I would have thought not you try it and let me know how about that that's a deal, isn't it? <laughs> there we go. Okay, so that's that. Let me lift that up so you can have a little look so far. There we go. Now I'm going to just paint those stamens because they're now dry. So we can go back and we can use our spring green. Hot, hot, hot. Right. Let's clean our paintbrush up because we've been using... Um, do I want to use one? I'm going to change back to paintbrush one. <laughs> right, okay, so we're on green. So when you put the colour then over the white, you get the true colour. If you put this over the pink and you won't get the you won't get the green quite like this, you'll have to do layer upon layer. It's just so much better to do it like this, okay. So put your white down first, let it dry, and then paint over the top, like so. And then we're going to get some brown. And then we're going to paint, they're like little sort of um, T's, aren't they, I suppose? They make it like a T shape. So we'll go around like that. I want them to be quite dark, so it's neat um, dark brown here. And the same on this side. There we go. And up here as well. OK. 
okay a bit of white on that one so there we go so that's that one done so let me hold that up so you can have a look at it so this is the one using our cookie cutter here so that's how this one is done okay so that's the cookie cutter here so when you cut it out with a cookie the marks that are underneath will emboss the shape for you um, so that does make it a little bit easier and if you wanted to see all of this done um, from start to finish on a cake if you go to my youtube channel and there is actually one on there um, that you can follow so have a look on there as well but that's that lily with that cutter do you want to just talk about you and gels instead um, ask, can you use gels instead? I don't use gels at all. People can um, paint with gels, but I don't like using gels. Um, I prefer to use dusts. Um, and I can't comment much further than that because I don't actually use them. Um, so, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's not very helpful, is it? But um, anyway, yes, I don't use gels, I'm afraid. I just use cocoa butter and dusts. Um, this one here that I'm going to use now is called Entwined Roses. And what I'm going to do is put it on my infamous coffee cutter. Now, I'm not going to use the whole thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this down on here. And I'm going to just press it down like so. Let's see what we've got. Almost. Let's just put it down once more. I've got a little bit in the middle. I haven't quite got. There we go. There's a bit of a lump in the middle of this cookie, Kelly. Are you blaming me? <laughs> I am blaming you, Kelly. Right, so there you go. I'm going to hold that up so you can see that one. So this one is called Entwined Roses, Kelly, something like that. Entwined Roses. Entwined Roses, this one. So what we're going to do with this one is we're going to paint this one on the green. So you can see what it looks like against the green. Now I'm going to make this middle bit a little bit darker because that's the centre of the rose. So there's two little bits there. Just those like that. Then I'm going to take some white and I'm going to tone it right down. And I'm going to then paint some of the outside edges of these so it's a little bit lighter. Like so. Now that's actually a calyx, so you need to be a bit careful there. Don't paint that bit. So the actual rose is there. Okay, this is all green, the rest of this, so don't get too carried away. Just keep an eye out for it. Someone asking a question about how high that coffee cup is. And yeah. I, I'm now. Oh, there's my ruler. Oh, there we go. Tape measure. Right. It is. 10 centimetres or 10, 10 and a half centimetres, that's how big it is, okay? Right, let's go back to entwined roses. Now, roses are notoriously difficult to paint, but hopefully this will solve a lot of the anxiety around painting roses and you can just use one of these because this is very pretty. And when you get the packet, actually the packet tells you to put it going round the sideways of the cake. And I thought, hold on a minute, we must be able to do something different with this. And that's why I then started turning it around and putting it in different places. And it just looks better. Right, now. So what have we got here? Paintbrush, what am I on at the moment? Two. Let's go down to paintbrush one, because it's getting a bit narrow again. So we switch over. And I'll grab some woodland green and a bit of white. Let's lighten it up a bit. And then what we'll do is we'll come in here. Like so. What colour did I paint that other one yet? So I've already had a run through with this one earlier today. I couldn't remember what I'd done. I was checking out what I did earlier. Okay. So we'll paint that one like that. I think it's with these coffee cups, I say I'm obsessed with them at the moment, um, because there's so many different designs out there, it does give you the opportunity to have a little practice with doing some painting, because what is happening is you're not having to make the world's biggest cake, you can just make a few biscuits and just have a little um, paint on biscuits and see how you get on. So there's no pressure then, you see, and you can just give them away, can't you, at the end, or eat them. 
or eat them. Yeah. You laugh then, Kelly. Yeah, well, it would be or eat them. <laughs> or eat them. So if you do want to have a go a little bit of painting and the thought of doing cakes is probably a bit too much, then cake boards like I've done with the lily or onto a cookie that you can then eat and give away is just as effective. You can get just as much practice doing something like this versus doing um, a cake. Sometimes you feel so under pressure when you do a cake, it's not good. So and when I was saying to my beginners florals, you know, practice on a cake board, have a go at that first, see how you get on, find your feet with your design and then do it on your cake. So have a have a practice first. But this is lovely, this one. I think this is a really pretty little design, this one. As you can see, and it looks really pretty against this little sort of beigey green background. Beigey green, that's probably not a colour, is it, Kelly? Leaf green background. Mm. Beigey green. <laughs> beigey green. <laughs> there we go. And then we'll go across like that. So I've not caught all of the design. I've only caught the side of it. Um, onto the cup like that. I'm just going to turn that round while that's drying before we go back and um, add a few more colours and we'll just paint this part of the cup as well just so it kind of looks like it all belongs together. We'll coordinate the lid on this occasion with the same green that we've been using before which is woodland green with white. It's also so nice to make for an afternoon tea. I think treat, yeah, treat boxes, going for a walk with somebody, take a biscuit with you. Look what I've bought. I haven't seen you for ages, right? Look at these flash biscuits I've started making in lockdown. <laughs> um, oh, there's so many things you can do. But mainly have a practice. Just, you know, if you made a whole say, a set of 12 biscuits and then you just sat and painted them all afternoon, you'd learn loads. And it's not taken me very long. I mean, I've been on now for an hour and 15 minutes and I've done three things already. So um, painting isn't something that takes absolutely ages to do. There we go. I'll turn that round like so. So I've coordinated my cup now with the lid. It's all blending lovely. And then we can go back, take a bit of extra darker green. And we can just add a few little highlights again just remember don't paint over the whole thing just paint over part of it you want to paint over the whole lot otherwise there was no point in painting that bit first was there if you just go over bits that will make it stand out more around here So entwined roses is this particular cutter or this embosser, okay, if you're wondering what it's called. Now if you put a bit too much on you can always pick up a paintbrush like I'm doing now and just move it around before it dries. As long as you do that you'll be fine. Just a little bit more green here. here as well. There we go. And then a little bit down there, just on the side. Now we already did a little bit of pink shading, but we'll just go back and do a tiny bit more. And where are we? There we go. Take some of the rose colour. Make it a little bit darker still. And then you can put that at the bottom there and you can just take it and blend it through. Like that, down the bottom. There we go. Just makes it a bit more 3D as well. some down there as well. Let's turn that round 
สักสักกันนิดนึงไว้Okay, so there we go. So that's a coffee cup. So that's really, really easy and straightforward. Again, so that one there was done with entwined roses, so you can see that. And then you've got this one here, which is the patchwork cutter one, which is that one. Now I did some other ones at the weekend. I'm just going to show you a few of those because again they're very straightforward. I also did another one earlier today which is this one here. Now let me bring this one back. So I didn't have time to paint it all, so I thought I would bring this one on and show you this one. So this one here is called Wild Rose. Okay, now what I did with this was I built this and put them into position. So again, I did this with soft sugar paste. Each one of these cutters was, um, so I've just moved my drink out of the way. Each one of these was individual and I pressed it into the sugar paste arranged them so this is a cutter this was a cutter this was a cutter and I put them on and I arranged them and then painted them that way and I've done again I did rose so I used rose color here and then for this background color here I used petal blue which I then added white to and then blended it out that way just to make it sort of a bit softer on the back there and then added some extra colours in with the rosebuds here as well. So again, but that's something you can move. It wasn't a fixed shape. I'm trying to find the thing for it. Oh, it's right in front of me. Here we go. So let me show you what I'm talking about, because otherwise you'll think I've gone mad. So this was the individual petal here. So all I did was put it on here, move it around and create my own thing. So all the petals and all the um, leaves for this are all separate. So when you get it, what happens is you can then build your own arrangements. You've got like little tiny buds there. So you go, well, I want a bud there and I might want a bud over there and a bud there and build it up yourself. So you can have as many of these as you want. And there is also a side bud of this one as well that you again, you could put in there if you wanted to take it all the way round and further. So this one, you can actually adjust it, whereas the lily is set as one piece. This one, you can actually move it around. And I think that again, this is a really good one for if you want to practice. So if you want to practice learning about shading or if you want to practice your leaves or anything like that, and actually building something, um, building your own flower arrangement. You've got all these different bits and pieces that you can kind of put together um, and end up with a lovely little display like that. So that one was the Wild wild Rose, that one's called. Um, and then uh, we also have, and actually what I'll do is I'll bring that one back and I'll go around the edge of this one because it's still soft. There's another super little one called Blossom and Leaf. And what I'll do is you can take this one. There's lots of different sizes again. And I'll show you what I did on another cake as well in a second. But you can take this. It's got little tiny... I don't think they're on the website. Yeah, they are. They're on new products somewhere, I think. Okay, so I'm going to press that one down. And you can create like a garland that goes round. I'm not going to do a whole garland. But what you can do, it's got a really nice trail. There's different ones, let me line it up, in the kit. So you've got several different sizes. There we go. Let me do three. So if you wanted to do then, because there's another little one here, so it's sort of a couple of different sizes. So you could change and come in a little bit further or make this one a bit smaller. So let's try that, press that down there. I'll paint that in so you can see it like that. So you can add in lots of different pieces there. Let's get my brush back again. Okay. So again, we'll just take hold of the green. And this is not, I do, um, years ago, when Kelly was little, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell a story about you, Kelly, but I went to floristry classes in the evening mm -hmm. and I didn't know what I was doing. I had absolutely no idea. And the first week, the lady said to me, right, 
the arrangements are going to be all foliage and I thought what what is she doing there's where is all the flowers what's happening and actually it made me really think about foliage and it actually made me realize just how many different types of foliage are out there and just you could make an entire arrangement with foliage and it just looks so nice so that I must admit I did learn that was the very first lesson and I learned a lot just from that one lesson straight away I couldn't believe it I thought what's she doing I'm here on a flower arranging course where's the flowers And actually she was right so I learned something there so this one here let's just grab a little bit more so if you wanted to make um, a little garland going round a board because I've noticed on here quite a lot of you like to do decorated boards so you could certainly use this one to do the board now when you come to do that centre bit if you just take your paintbrush and run it along you'll feel it sort of just slot into that gap as long as you've got the right size paintbrush and you're not trying to put in the world's biggest paintbrush down there and this is paintbrush one then you will find that you should be able to get a fairly sort of reasonable stem if you're trying to put in paintbrush three or something it's going to look awful but you should be able and keep it pale as well as long as you don't make it too dark then you'll find that you won't have um problems with um making sort of harsh thick lines or anything like that you can always go back and darken things up I always tend to take tentative steps towards getting darker in colour because it's so much harder to rescue if it's the other way around let's put that there it's coming like that and then you could add your own flowers as well so if you wanted to add like little sugar plate sugar paste blossoms like little tiny white flowers something like that you could do that so you could punch some out to go around it so you don't just have to do all painted sometimes a combination of things looks really nice as well so where you have um, a couple of um, little flowers something painted we did a cake like that didn't we on um, YouTube a while ago again it was on here so there was something I can't remember what we did now oh it's the cake with mum written on it that had some painting on it and it also had the little punched out sugar paste blossoms and quite a few of you went on and did that so um, that was a very popular design there we go it doesn't have to be really dark either you can just keep it quite nice and light but that's very pretty um, and doesn't take very long to get going and again you can then go back take hold of some dark and just put a little bit on the bottom of some of these leaves and that will just sort of make it stand out a little bit more but if I wanted to I could go all the way around and just do something like that okay like so Hopefully it's changing it a little bit. Yes, it is. It's funny because when I look up on the camera, it looks completely different to what I'm doing down here because I sometimes can't see it very well. And then when I look up on the camera and realise you can all see it, um, then it is really quite... There we go. You can see the difference there like that. But you could certainly have a go with doing lots of different type painting on here without the need to be able to draw and then the other one that was in the same I think that's in the same packet yeah this one blossom and leaf so not only has it got the leaf in there it's got this really sweet little um, embosser here which I did on this heart shape um, which again I just took and I pressed it onto there and then I painted it like that so this is a really nice this is all part of blossom and leaf and that's a really pretty little cutter and again if you wanted to have a go at doing flowers it's very straightforward a uh, little bit of rose a little bit of white some woodland green we put some petal blue behind it but you don't have to do that um, you can do um, all sorts of different things I'm just kind of showing you lots of different examples of things that you can do and of course it ended up on my lovely cookie kit <laughs> because I can't help myself it ended up on here as well so again it was another design that was put on here we went for a powder blue color background this time um, for this particular flower but again it's you can see there put these two side by side 
I haven't painted the top on that one yet, but you can see exactly the sort of thing that you can do with something like that. And then I did a little tiny rose as well, which was in another kit. What was that one called? Why, no, that was Magnolia and Rose, that one. Yeah, so that's Magnolia and Rose. And again, I just joined these two up and painted them there. So there's all sorts of different things that you can do. And you do not have to be the world's best painter or have any ability to draw. Um, you can just paint using all sorts of different embossers and you can see all the things that I've done tonight. Let me move this out of the way so you can have a little look. We've been very busy. So let's take that one there. And again, I will put a great big, I will put a picture on Instagram so you can see everything that's been done. So that's the stuff that I've painted live. Apart from that one, we didn't paint that one live. That's the live stuff on there. There we go. Like that that on there so that lily belongs to that lily cutter which is on our website just in case anyone's getting confused so this is our cookie cutter that we normally use for royal icing there's the royal ice cookie and that's what we did on sugar paste so we just popped it on there created a bit of a shape and then just done some painting on that one this one we've done with patchwork cutters lily which again we've just pressed it down it's one solid shape the arrangement's there for you so you are not trying to do anything else with it you literally just press it down and pick it up like that the other one that I did, which was this one, um, you built. So this one was in all separate pieces and then you just built it up yourself and kind of just moved it around until you got to the point where you liked it or you adapted it according to how big or how small that your cake was. So there's all sorts of bits and pieces you can do and most of them will end up on my coffee cup. So <laughs> um, I can't help myself at the moment. It's just got to be. So there you go. All right. So I'm going to hold those up so you can have a really good look now. So that's the lily, so that's that one there, okay? Make sure, very, very important, that it's dark here, because if it's not dark here, these won't stand out, okay? So you've got to put lots of darker colour in here. And then this one here, so that's the lily with the blossom, that's the blossom and leaf that's going around the corner there. And the lily there, so don't forget that's a fixed shape, that one. And then this one here was called Entwined Roses, which is the one that we did on the cookie, coffee cup. And that's also this one I did on the coffee cup, which was part of Blossom and Leaf, which is also, there we go, like so. So there's so many different designs there. So don't feel intimidated by painting. Just have a go and see what you can come up with. So go and have a little look in your cupboards. And if you don't have anything in your cupboards, these are not horrendously expensive to buy but you can achieve lots of things on there and they're very transferable you can put them onto all sorts of things like heart-shaped cookies lilies all sorts so you can just keep going with it as i i'm finding i'm quite addicted to this now <laughs> oh jillian's on jillian's my cookie queen she <laughs> Gillian is very good at cookies. She likes her cookies and she's done very well with them. She's done a lot of these ones very, very well. And she'll <laughs> on my Royal Icing group. So there you go. All right. I come back on now, you see. I'm going to put my website up there now. So thank you very much for joining me for a painting special this evening, showing you how to paint flowers onto anything, basically. So cake boards, sugar paste, biscuits anything um, but the painting is with cocoa butter and dusting colours and it is done on the sugar paste so don't practice on paper you need to practice on some sugar paste it's much easier to do um, paper absorbs cocoa butter so you can't actually ever build anything up on there so a little bit of sugar paste just rolled out to one one side and practiced on is all you need to do just get a few cake boards lying around and have a go make sure if you're doing any embossing that you do it straight away so when you've rolled out your sugar paste you need to emboss it straight away then you need to paint it there's no point in leaving it because otherwise you will um, when you come to emboss it it will just um, crack as somebody put earlier I think so didn't they um, so I will be back on Thursday morning at half past 11 on sugar and crumbs so if you have any questions with regards to anything that we've done this evening then you can either drop me a message via my website which is up on the screen at the moment traceskates.co.uk thank you Kelly thank you everyone everyone book Kelly's colour theory class please <laughs> it's going to save me a fortune <laughs>
anyway. <laughs> She's going not. traveling, I know. It's fine. I'm only winding you up, Kelly. Um, but yes, thank you very much. Don't forget to like and share. That's something else we need to do as well. And I will be back on Thursday at half past 11. I think there's going to be quite a heavy duty painting week, everybody. So if you're into painting, I'll probably be painting again on Thursday. I'm still in recovery from doing the 80s cake live. <laughs> Two and a half hours of cake decorating. So there we go. I hope you have a lovely evening. Um, and take care. And I will see you all on Thursday morning. Take care.